Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11. And of course, we're playing as Japan. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see you around more often. Just hit that subscribe button. If you want to ring the bell to get all the notifications, but you know, just know that there's something new every day. Um, you know, once in a while I mess up and don't get something released, but it's basically something new every day. And at least one of the new things every day is this or another Hearts of Iron 3 series. Tactical Air Command has advanced. We'll let that continue. We're doing well enough pushing other technologies ahead. Well, there's a heavy armory unit in there. Mechanized unit. Or transport that may be associated with the heavy armor. Some SS armor. Maybe some SS garrison troops too. The SD there, there, so those aren't really good. Okay, well now they're attacking. That's sort of the kind of thing. I was wondering why they hadn't been pushing earlier. No. I know you're Italy. I know you may need it, but for various reasons, no. Obviously, this isn't moving very fast, and there are, I forget who, channels, but do a lot of sort of fast... Um, you know, um, watching, sort of pulled out like this to watch the, oh, I want to reap, they're not really reap, uh-oh, pack concluded, Vichy France allies, but this may switch back and forth again. I was told that sometimes that this goes back and forth every day for a while, but it did it once before, and leaves the allies, okay. Now that isn't maybe the best for the AI, having that happen a lot. So in case you're wondering, we determined last time that it's going to be sometime after January 29th, because I need these transports, I think. Well, I need them. I think that'll be enough to be able to at least drop one parachute unit at a time. Two isn't enough. Okay. Things have happened. Okay. Industrial zone is ready. Oh, pause. Um, is ready. Okay. Um, military half-tracks have a superior movement bonus and speed, but are expensive to produce. Yes, that's because we did the... Okay, we've lost the effects of medium popularity. We've gained high popularity. Very, very good. That gives us 4% bonus in leadership. Territorial pride of 3% and national unity 0.2%. Okay, good. From no... And the hood has been lost from no bonuses or penalties. Don't know where that battle happened, but yeah, took out the hood somewhere. Okay. 
Now that we have more leadership, what do we do with it? Um, let's come over here. Now up here. Um, yeah, we'll do broadcasting. Are you moving this guy away? Wow. I just have to wonder what their threat assessment is. Have they moved all of that just to deal with some partisans? Rebels, whatever. Because I could see a losing Britain somehow here rationally go yeah we can't hold India let's just give it up now we've also seen me play Britain if you've watched the series I do recommend it of being able to hold the sort of this Thai River line here whatever river that is in Thailand um, and have them pound on me well I think I could have held well it's a bit longer line I think I could have held somewhere in here if I didn't do that and so India is not the best thing to give up. Okay, commerce, defense, advance. I think that's, yeah, multiple levels. Um, yeah, we'll let that go. We're almost to 42 as it is. Integrated armored fighting and vehicle support battalion into our motorized and mech forces, which we only really have motorized right now, and just a few. Um, that's sort of why I was reluctant to do that. Um, not reluctant to do that is Germany or some other America or you know even the Soviets I'd be yes yes do that most assuredly and fast as you can manpower we can take the manpower and the supply production hit okay yeah we'll do air defense network How are all of our production technologies doing? Okay. December. Well, long-range aircraft will help with the production of those transports a little bit faster, but won't be too much because they'll just hit it 30 days. Oh, and the renown is lost. So presumably Germany is doing something right. There's a nice now and another battleship. See, I don't know whether it's Germany doing something right or the British doing something stupid. Stupid would be sending in, you know, battleships into here and getting slaughtered. Doing something right, going after Nisenau up here. Yeah, that works for me. That's what they're doing. Okay, now they're pushing a little better. If you push fast enough, I was talking last episode on supplies and how to alleviate things um, going deep into the Soviets. If you push fast enough, you may be outrunning your supplies, but you can be eating theirs. Because if you can take this province and get the supplies that they have here and eat those and not finish eating those before you get to the next province and get their supplies, you can just dine out on their supplies if you're moving fast enough. That is partially why I will, when I got slower units that are sort of back there, I will, in the rear, I will grab and strategically move them because they will move at their strategic movement rate. And that is not affected by supplies levels because if I can get them right to the frontline province, they can maybe pick up supplies that were captured and move forward regularly from that. Okay, large battery capacity. That would be for submarines. Um, and it's a one and done. Very good. Well, 
We'll improve some marine torpedoes. And we still may get those done before we go to the war because well, we're getting some of these done here in November. Yeah, I don't know. I was hoping to have all that done before we entered the war, but I added the supplies or the um, transports. Okay, yes, we'll take this. That's an air base, not a naval base. I don't know if we'll put something there. We've got something on most of the, or all of the naval bases in Japan. Just trying to, when you, if it can't see the type of unit or its strength, I'm just trying to make the AI think twice about invading. Advanced resource substitution, very good. Um, oh, here, one and done. Okay. And this is the thing like using um, molybdium. It's hard to say, but um, it's a, um, and I was read about it recently. Um, uh, originally was mistaken for either um, lead, um, that's sort of how it gets its name, or graphite. But it's its own um, molecular structure from either of those but you often find it in similar sorts of locations, particularly with lead, but, um, or copper, I think you also find a lot with copper. But if you take molybdenum and mix it with steel, you get a very hard steel. Molybdenum on its own it isn't, to my, the best of my knowledge, very hard. But it mixed with steel makes a really good um, hard um, steel compound. For cutting tools so if you don't have enough tungsten see tungsten on its own can make good um again sorry if i get any of this wrong but i do believe i'm correct on this uh, so if tungsten on its own can be good um you know cutting edges for machine tools so you may you know, have a little tungsten blade on uh, you know welded or whatever um the process is onto a, a piece of steel that you know the machine holds the steel you use the tungsten cutting part, whether it's a drill head or a um, other sort of um, cutting tool, cutting head. So you're using the tungsten part, and of course you slowly use up the tungsten, you keep resharpening it, but you slowly use it up as you, you use it. And so that's sort of the best um, for cutting, you know, because you're wanting often to cut armored steels or other very hard steels to on things. So um, you want to do that but sometime or germany has a tungsten problem having enough tungsten so they often will mix tungsten with steel to make a very hard cutting steel well if you don't have enough tungsten to even do that or you can use molybdenum to make a very hard steel so that's sort of res, res, advanced resource substitution that's the kind of things and then you can get into chemical engineering chemical compounds and whatever and find other um, substitutes uh, you know the very famous is um, synthetic rubber that America is, you know develops along with Germany and other things is turn um, mostly I think it's the petrochemical waste elements for making gasoline you could burn the sludge as a you know a, a crude fuel for heating or you know heating up a boiler to generate electricity I think but it's no use for you know in you know um general um vehicles and no use in um aircraft and the sludge is also um i think no use in any sort of ship spoilers but now of course other things is you can use um some of that yes let's have these cores um, use some of that in um, making plastics as well. Supply production, yeah, we'll go for that.
We'll send a couple of these guys. I know they're not really any real fighting unit, but... We capture a traitor. Hmm. Our intelligence arrested for treason Hatsumi o o Ozaki, a member of the well-known VP club or no, VIP club of the Showa Ken Kyu Kai, close to the government. We must be very discreet concerning this arrest, especially since we still don't know how much or which foreign country hired him. Okay. Is this a, um, a specific event? I do not know of this. Wish they had a little bit more information on this. Gain five in descent, which is very unlooked for. I've sort of been hoping to get down to zero um, descent real soon. Carrier task force, okay. Um, and yes, one and done. So better positioning for that and much better CAG duty efficiency. And amphibious unit training, also good. Now we've got a fair amount of Marines, so we'll let that go. Well, we can start on carrier armor for our next batch of carriers. I don't know that 5% descent, 5% descent hurts us much, but you just don't want to build it up. So I figure we're going to take some of that with submarine losses is going to go up. And I don't know that I can keep that. Oh, good, good. Finally, some German blueprints have stolen our, your Imperial Highness or spies have stolen plans that let us improve our abilities in political indoctrination to level three. So, um, are one of the things I don't really waste time on. Here is moved, attrition is higher. Um, I think generally speaking, and not just for these units, so that's why I normally don't bother with these. Um, oh well, morale is higher. Not one I was looking for. Well, I would call this a general success, keeping these relatively cheap units here. They were keeping semi-motorized armor, more armor. They may not be great art units, but keeping them on our borders for very little cost. Might not be enough to mean the difference between victory and defeat out here, but still, it helps. Ah, okay. Another um, commerce raider. Who um, was commanded by Rear Admiral Leader Vizema. Okay, good. We'll take that. And naval units. Okay. Um, oh good, we got two there, um, two there, so let's put these under, um, where, where is it, um, where are subs, oh there, subcommands, and under subcommands, okay, that gives us, I think a total of five. We come up here, and we can see earlier just one, but and it was suggested, and we can do that now. Move this guy, and we can base him out of here, maybe. 
put him in the Indian Ocean to early on start raiding. Um, well, yeah. How big a port is this? Oh, big enough. Raiding in the Indian Ocean, get him out there before this closes down. And we will see about these other two groups to sort of wait. For me, the big thing is to wait. And I don't know whether we should split them up or keep them together. Um, let's at least put on one Commerce Raider Admiral. Is waiting to get full, get up to at least you know 70 80 percent strength. Okay, um, fuel we would give them fuel for money. Sure, we have plenty of fuel. Arctic warfare equipment, which the main thing I wanted was extreme combat terrain. Okay, um, so that you can see reduces um, Arctic attrition, which we will have little or none of. We might, you know, if we go into Alaska or something. Um, but here, extreme terrain we wanted to get. It's a 40 technology. Um, helps with a various you know, pack artillery and paratroopers and um, mountain units in places like jungle attack and, you know, um, Arctic and whatnot. So we wanted to do that. Because I don't know if it's Arctic province considered, but where is... Um, had to. Japan did take that, though that is not an Arctic province that so might get cold in the winter. Um, they did, and they took one other island up here, but may, you know, pretty small. Don't necessarily have any basing, but. And we very well may be taking an island like that, putting on an air base. And other defenses and then see about invading one of these other islands and then see about building some naval basing to get closer and closer to the US either as a distraction from other things like the Japanese did okay that ended or as a um, means of pushing into Alaska and whatnot Thick pressure holes. Very good. That's submarines, and I think a one and done. Yeah. Good. So we can evade depth charges and whatnot better. Great. Yeah, let's do that. How is Europe doing? Okay, moving around the pre-pit marshes. See, look at all, look at how different it is with the Italians here. We have units that were loaned to who is that? Um, uh oh, pause, 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 pause. Um, okay, loaned to uh, Slovakia, but our German units that are up here. German unit that's been loaned to Italy that's up here. Um, but for some reason we're not seeing Hungarian units. I don't know why not. Oh, well, we do see some, uh, looks like maybe through an event, but, um, loan to Germany, Hungarian. So that, that works just about as well, I guess. I just wish if I asked for units, they would loan them to me. Again, I come out of the background of playing, um, finally um advanced third reich but it was sort of the game third reich that was um the map mostly like what we're seeing here you know i think it did go up to the top of there but down here there was a an expansion that um out, out of a published magazine that you could sort of i sort of photocopied the 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 map board extension out and hand colored it to match the as good as i could to match the rest and you know expanded the map down into um, Ethiopia down here basically so that 
it connected to the rest but it was just europe and it's it's, it's a great wonderfully great um uh tabletop counters playing it um there was or is still and it's still play i don't know if people really hardly play third reich anymore i'm sure somebody does but um is the world in flames is, is out of the um australia and it's more expensive and it is probably better i've never played it i've watched it played in person a few times at some game conventions but it was just expensive and i had very few people who would be you know just two or three people that i knew that would stay around and play for a campaign you know come multiple days and campaign of third reich and trying to go to something more in depth and advanced that was pushing things a bit too much so i never did get into um world in flames but that expands out to the world and there's been this ephemeral world in flames computer game out for a long long time and i think it is out now but there's no ai they were never able to do an ai for it um so i don't know whether they never could do it or anybody who tried um crashed and burned so bad that they've never you know been able to release it never anything functional but um and so yeah if you've got people to play it against you you know if you're playing on the you know computer even that could be around the world that's good um and that could be better than could be but i don't think it is because you could have everyone playing um all the different countries on uh, um hearts of iron so the one thing i really coming from that background and so i'm used to the idea of playing the axis so you're playing as italy now italy has its production capabilities so italy produces italian units and italian stuff so and you can use it on the german front or you can use it in africa you could use it wherever you wanted to and so italy does italy but you control italy i would really love the ability to control other people other um forces in your faction of course, I'd love it even more with since we have such bad AIs. Um, though the, the, I guess the real problem is, and not just simply to inherit country. I mean to, to have you know Slovakia be Slovakia. You know, if you want to give them German units for some reason, great. Don't know why you would want to do that, but great if that's what you want to do. But it just so that they're you know junky units, and no, you're not going to use Slovak troops you know, to be your main offensive unit. They could be anti-partisan forces or stacked with other German units just to give a little bit more, you know, capability to us, you know, a, a stack of units than they would have had otherwise. And then they're useful. But you don't want to, as we see in, in reality, when they had the Italians and the Romanians and whatnot huh, holding the flanks to the, the Stalingrad line, um, you have the Soviets, you know, come in from each way and cutting them off. So you don't want to give them, you know, realistically um, large controls of the front because they're not that good of units. So that's fine. And that's the kind of thing I want to do and, and have. But if you have the humans playing all of these countries against a really sucky AI, I could see how that would be too much of an advantage. But I wouldn't mind doing that. I, again, like I said earlier um i think it was last episode about you know some people don't want too much micromanagement well i could take on a lot more micromanagement you know do all the production decisions for all of these countries do all of everything for all of my allies you know finland was an ally and whatnot and do all of that and be i don't know you probably get bored watching me go into such detail but i could enjoy it um and of course if you had that option then to have a allied player and to have a Soviet player or something that could deal with their, um, you know, complete faction. And so you just have the AIs running neutrals or whatever, but that would be fun for me. Okay. Shipbuilding technologies have advanced and 42, and we're going to let that continue because we're going to reduce it even more. And Soviet Union has decided great patriotic war and winter offensive okay i thought they already had done the patriotic war or no yeah the patriotic war not the winter offensive i knew they hadn't done that oh good 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 we're going to drop down in particularly the torpedo boats really um 
Yeah, they're useful. They have their uses. We're going to drop all of these guys in one at a time because what we're going to do here, and we'll even come up here and look. Um, no. Yeah, you could you could use them quite legitimately as um, escorts for for um, transports. That would be useful. Oh well, let's find out where we want to send them. Okay. Yes, and I know we may be okay. We have one here. We got three carriers. Let's start over here. Um, two carriers, one of that. Well, no, we're going to start over here because we're going to be facing the Americans first over here. So, um, okay, so we're going to up that. Well, here you, so are you. Okay, a lot of important, but not that important. Yes, I know we're out of supply here. Okay, um, well, we'll send these guys back to truck. They were really going to, uh, you know, it'll help, but it won't, I think, solve the problem. Yeah, they could use one. I know we're, and this is partially why I'm sending off more to back here, because we're going to send more here. Okay, so just the one carrier group sitting there. Yeah, that's a big carrier group. Oh, I totally understand why the supply levels should be what they are. Okay. I figure it is best to um, protect my carriers over my older battleships and things, so, yeah, we'll send them one, no, not that, this one not yet sent anywhere, and we have these guys, I think these are just old battleships, yeah, so I think I have one more, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. They can come down here to this group where there's two CVs. So greater pro um, protection for my carrier groups against aircraft particularly. And we are getting slowly into Tropical Island Garrisons. And we're still at January 29. And we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. I know it's December 6th. It's probably not going to be next episode. Um, like I say, because we're, we want to get those this is sort of the thing. I, I, I feel the general need to get the show on the road. But having the ability to... Because I'm pretty damn sure with six of these, and if I have to get that heavy transport in, I was hoping the heavy transport could load one up, but it still may, able, may be able to. Um, but with six, I'm hoping three would have done it, but probably not. So four, I don't know just how many more I should have put in there. But with six, I'm hoping to at least be able to do one good para drop of one division. So it can take at least a weekly held um, spot or something. So we're looking at early February start time. So hopefully in yeah, two more episodes or so, we may be starting the big show. So Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. Please post your comments. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.